power on. And if I put it all together, I'm just going to press it on from here and see if the fan runs or not. Okay. So that proves it is. Right, first day back at work after installer show and I'm back at a job which I've been to a while ago where I had to change the synchro motor on the underfloor heating zone valve. The customer messaged me saying that they're still having some issues with the underfloor heating. This is obviously months later. I mean, to be fair, I don't know why they got the underfloor heating on anyway because right now my watch is reading 24 degrees. But obviously it's an issue that needs resolving. So let's go inside and see what's going on. Right, so this one, you may remember from a couple of videos ago, I changed the synchro motor on that. Now that's all working fine, but there's no heat going to it. We put the thermostat on for it, that came on. Well, I didn't even need to use the thermal imaging camera because nothing's happening. However, I'll take you upstairs, about four flights of stairs, catch my breath, and I'll fill you in, in what I think it is and what I found. That is a lot of stairs. What is it saying? My heart rate is up to 116. I've hit my uh, number of stairs. I need to climb target. Okay, so the issue is, came up to the boiler to see if it fired up. It sounded like it was running, but it, it was, but it wasn't. And let me show you what actually happens. As soon as I turn the power off, as soon as I turn the power on, Hear that? The fan is just constantly coming on, like constantly running without any demand or anything like that. Now, I have had it before in the back seat. When I came up to the boiler initially, sorry, it's time to catch my breath. This happens the day after installer. It's so knackered. You gotta climb up and down stairs. And it's hot today as well. Anyway, boiler was showing an F32 fan fault. Took the case of fans constantly running, I tried resetting it, fans constantly running. Turned it off, turned it on, fans constantly running. Normally, I'd be going, yeah, change the fan. However, I've had it before in the back seas where when the fan constantly runs, it's actually a fault with the PCB. It's sending the wrong signal to the fan. Now, I might be wrong here, but I haven't got a fan on me. But I do have a PCB on me. So, the first thing to do Try that, because if it sorts it, problem solved, I'm going to come back for another visit. If that doesn't solve it, then at least we know I've got to come back with a new fan. And yeah, should be, shouldn't be a problem, but let's try that. And before you guys ask, so how did we get hot water? I asked myself the same question. Do you know why? The immersion's been on. So that's why they're getting hot water. But let's try and change the PCB out. Hopefully it works. And that'll be a nice first time fix. Let's get it. Old board, new board, power on. And before I put it all together, I'm just gonna press it on from here and see if the fan runs or not. Okay. So that proves it is a fan fault. It's not a PCB issue. It is. Definitely a fan fault. So let's turn this back off. Turn that back off. Take that PCB back out again. And I'll have to book in another visit to come back with a new fan. Ah oh man, that's frustrating. That's frustrating. I actually genuinely thought that was gonna be the PCB because of the way it was behaving. But I also know that that fan has got a PCB on it as well, which could have gone faulty as well. At least I've tried. It's not worked. So I know that it is going to be the fan. So I've got to now come back with a fan. Not today. I'll be back another day. And before I even attempt to replace the fan, I will be getting them to clear that space because there's an, I struggle to change the PCB. And the PCB is not a hard component to change. But there's no way I'm doing the fan like that. Especially afterwards, I've got to do my FGA and everything, 26.9 checks. So there's no way 
I'm going to attempt to replace the fan side on and just get them to make me some space. When I come back, next one, I don't know if I'm going to record it or not, I'll see. It's a full service on a Worcester Green Star ERP. There's a couple of leaks under the buff, which I don't know if I'm going to get involved with or not. So this may be the only thing that I record today, but if it's not, then I guess I'll see you in the next one. You like my new shades? Courtesy of Baxi from Installer Show. Now, I am at a job today. It is the hottest day of the year so far. Today, I believe it's going to be peaking at 34 degrees. It's only half 12, half 12, sorry, half 11. It's already 28 degrees. I'm here today with Romano and he's got me in to investigate some wonderful heating issues that his customers have been having. So I've got him to get the customer to turn it on an hour before I was coming so I can get in there, get the thermal imaging on and see what exactly it's doing. I think it might need flushing out. It might need to strip some bits apart. I'm hoping it's going to make it interesting content, so I'm going to be filming this. If it doesn't, then this whole video will be irrelevant, but I'm hoping it does. So let's go in, let's get cracking, and let's see if we can get this underfloor heating up and running. Right, so this is the underfloor heating manifold. So the ground floor is all underfloor heating up, says we've got radiators. Romano's flushed out the problem zones, but since he's done it, apparently... Nothing else seems to be working. Nothing's getting hot. I'm here today, got the thermal imaging camera. First things first, so this has been on for about an hour or so, just over maybe. So everything should be on. The only two zones which are off is the bathroom and the utility, that's fine. So first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna get this on and I'm gonna go around and I wanna see where we've got hot spots and where we haven't got hot spots, and then we can start doing what we've whatever we need to do. Because even the blending valve seems to be that's on 55, so that's fine. Got heat coming out of there. Yeah, look, we've got heat there. That's showing just over 60, no, just under 60 degrees. So we have got heat coming in. Pump's got all of its lights on, so pump's doing what it's supposed to do. Um, around the manifold, I can't see if there are close couple of T's on it or not. But that was a suggestion. But I think before we do that, we need to obviously find out why this isn't coming on or if there are areas that are coming on, why it's not getting anywhere. So let's do a bit of investigation. All right, so I've just gone around the whole of the ground floor with the 860i and we can see the loops. So we've got heat signatures all picking up all around here, all around here. Obviously, it's a, it's a little bit deceiving in terms of because it's so hot out today, we don't know if the floor is being warmed up from the sunlight or if the temperature that we're reading is coming off the loops. We are getting an even temperature across everywhere. I'll probably just add in the screen recording because I've done the screen recording of this on my phone. So I'll drop that into the video as well. But it's just a case of now we want to flush everything up because Romano showed me a video that he's done when he initially flushed it and there was a lot of orange water and it was glugging. Now we're going to flush each loop out individually, make sure it's running crystal clear, make sure there's no air in it. Once we've done that, we'll fire it up again and we'll go around with this again and see if we're getting, you know, better heat signatures coming through it. So let's crack on with that now. Right, we are main flushing, so we've just done the first zone and literally as soon as we put it on, orange water start coming out the dump hose and it starts spluttering a bit as well. So definitely I reckon there's some air in there, but that seems to be out. I'm going to record the next one. I'm going to shut this one down, open this one. And Roman has got his mains flushing thing here. So I'm actually going to probably mimic this because it's quite good. So you've got cold mains coming in there. And then you can choose which way you want it to direct. So right now that's coming in through the cold there. Going around the left hand side here. That's going up into the manifold, flushing down, coming back up again, back into here. And then over here, we've got that locked off, so it's not going to go back around this way. Got this open, so that then dumps it around. Now, if you wanted to circle it around the system, you can get it to do that as well. Then you just have both dump valves closed and just have that open, so then it will actually just circle it around. But when your main's flushing, you don't usually need to circle it. You just want to get it all dumped out. And he's also cleverly put a little pressure gauge on there as well, so we can see that's running at one and a half bar. And now we are going to... 
Actually, you know, yeah, I'm going to shut that. Shut this one down. Open this one. And then we're going to have a look. Reds are the same on both blues. Blues are the same, yeah. Fair enough, yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> so we've shut that one down. Open this one. Now, I've switched the valves around as well in, in the sense of I've opened that one. So now we're going to be going in the natural direction of how the underfloor heating would be working. So we're going to see that vial open in a minute. So as soon as I open that, there we go. That valve's moving down. And now let's go out and see how that's looking. Let's see if we get any uh, glugging or orange tints on this one. There we go, look. That is definitely not how it should be looking. So it's actually a good, <clears throat> it's a good sign that we're seeing that because if it was just clear water coming out, then it's like, okay, what are we actually looking for? But all right, we're going to let that go for a bit until that runs clear. And then we can also reverse the direction of the flow as well. And that will then make sure that we've got it clear completely. I'm also hoping that we see it sputtering a bit. It's not sputtering at the moment, but when it sputters, it means that there's any air bubbles or anything like that in there, that's going to get rid of as well. So we're just going to let this run now until it runs clear. We're going to have a bit of lunch in the sun. Where is it now? Half 12. It's still saying 28 degrees. I think it's a little bit hotter. But yeah, be back in a bit. We got a bad one. We got a bad one. Look at the colour of that. That's actually come down a bit from when we first started flushing it. So on this one, the flow meter was wound down a bit. So as soon as we started flushing it, the flow meter wasn't moving at all and we had nothing coming out of here. So we adjusted it a little bit and then the flow meter started dropping and then we started getting water coming out of it. And obviously you saw the state of it. That's definitely gone clearer, but that's been the dirtiest one so far. And that is the utility zone. So we're going to carry on doing what we're doing, get it all flushed out and then we might take apart the blending valve as well whilst the system is off and emptied just to make sure that there's no debris or muck stuck in there. But I reckon, I'm hoping, I don't want to jinx it, I'm hoping that once we've done this it should all be working again. Alright, Romano just packing up the last few bits, I need my hose lock connection, but it's been a success. I'll put the screen recording up on this as well but basically we had a difference or an increase in temperature of about anywhere between six to eight degrees so when i came in here in the morning the first screen recording we were getting about 30 32 degrees across and that underfloor heating had been on for two and a half hours before i got here after we flushed everything out we put it all back on again and after an hour we were getting average temperatures of around 37 38 degrees across the whole floor so i know it's a hot day today but there's no way that that's in the space of time that we've been doing this work that that's increased it by six to eight degrees naturally that's happened because of the underfloor heating and it's only been on for about an hour and also the fact that we were mains flushing it so it was obviously cold water going through it so it would have been a lot colder which i should have probably got recorded on the thermal imaging camera before we fired it up again but hey ho bottom line is it's worked i'm happy Romana's happy customers are happy which is the main thing they came in they walked around they're like never felt this warm before so happy days <laughs>